Hello everyone, this is Josef Not here and welcome back to the third part of the tutorial where I'm talking about turbulence modeling. In the first part I was talking about turbulence models and I showed you the source code of simple form. In the second part I set up the base case and now I'm going to start with the simulations. So I jump in, I enter the k-epsilon case. Here I set up the case. In zero I set up the initial conditions. In constant I created the mesh with block mesh and in system I set up the dictionaries, control dict, FV schemes and FV solution. Now I can just start with the simulations. I type in simple foam and press enter. And now the simulation is running. At first I would like to take a look at the output here in the terminal, analyze it and then open up the, the actual results in Paraview and then compare the information that we gain out of the output from here and the information that we get in Paraview. Now let's just wait until 2000. The simulation is converging. On the right hand side you see zeros which is good simulation finished and if i go here to the source code so we reach the last iteration iteration number 2000 and then we enter u equation in u equation we solve the momentum equations and here it says solving for ux and solving for uy and the initial residual for ux is below 10 to the power of minus 6. We set in fv, solu FV solution. Here tolerance of 10 to the power of minus 6. And for uy the initial residual is still a little bit above this value. The question is, is this good enough? Is the u field convergent? Then for P, the pressure divided by density, the initial residual is 10 to the power of minus 5. Now this might be an issue. Let's take a look at this later on in Paraview, if we are convergent. And for epsilon and K, the initial residuals are minus 7 and minus 7. So we are below 10 to the power of minus 6. Okay, now what is this residual? I want to talk about that a little bit. And if I go here back to the Navier-Stokes equations, for example, here, the residual is nothing else than the difference between the terms on the left-hand side and terms on the right-hand side in your discretized equations, in the matrix equation. And if you put all the terms from the right hand side on the left hand side then in the, the exact case you have zero on the right hand side then but not in your numerical case and the question is what is zero and in this case we defined 10 to the power of minus 6 to be our zero the question is is this good enough and i chose this value because i know that this works now I will open up the results in Paraview. For that, I will open a new terminal, enter the tutorial folder of simple form and the k epsilon case, and I open up Paraview. And the reason for this second terminal is that Paraview seems to have an issue with the the epsilon field and the omega field, I will show you that a little bit later on. But now I want to concentrate on u at first, the velocity, yes. So now, as I, yeah, this is the error message. I will come to that a little bit later on. So this is the velocity. And as I browse through the iterations, you see that there is a definite change in the velocity field but again i want to stress that this is not a time dependent change this is only the change of your velocity field from our initial value with zero 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 in the entire domain towards our stationary solution 
And as you see, after seven, eight, nine hundred iterations, the velocity field does not change considerably. So the velocity field is convergent. And this is also what we saw here in regard to the residuals, we reach 10 to the power of minus six, more or less. Good, now let's take a look at P. This was the field with the, the highest initial residual. And as you see in the beginning, the P field does change, but after eight, 900 iterations, the P field remains constant. So this initial residual is good enough for this case again. Now it's for K, the K field, the turbulent kinetic energy changes, but after seven, 800 iterations, the field remains constant. So this is also converging. And the new T, the turbulent kinematic viscosity is also changing, but after eight, nine hundred iterations, the field remains constant. And we set the values of K and epsilon on the inlet, so we have a turbulent viscosity of 10 to the power of minus three, which means that this value is higher than our physical viscosity which uh, was set to 10 to the power of minus five. So in this case, turbulence is dominant. And here you see that here behind the step, we have an even higher turbulence with four times 10 to the power of minus three. Now I want to come back to epsilon. I cannot show you epsilon here. And the reason is this error message here, it says found duplicated entries. And this is an issue since the last versions of OpenFOAM. And you can circumvent this by converting your results to VTK format. So if you type in foam to VTK, and this is the reason why I showed you this possibility to visualize your OpenFOAM results in the very first tutorial. If you type in foam to VTK, then you convert your results to VTK format. Here you have an additional folder. And now you can open up this, apply. And then if I translate it, and let's just open up new T. As you see, it's the same case but now you are able to show, to visualize epsilon. Okay, so this is how to circumvent this weird error message. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, good. Now, I was talking about these wall functions here and that you have to have a y plus value between 5 and 30, at least. That's what Wikipedia says. How to check this? I want to show you this. You type in y plus RIS, press, press enter, and this calculates your y plus values on the walls. And for all the iterations that you saved, and here you see on the lower wall and on the upper wall, we have an average value of more or less 42. And we have a maximum value of 78 and minimum value of 2.7. But let's just concentrate on the average value. And 42 is not within this interval. So what I would do now, I would go back and change my block mesh. I would refine it, make myself smaller. So I have a y plus value between five and 30. But this is now your homework. Go back and change your grid so you have at least an average value between 5 and 30. And then take a look at the results and check if there is a considerable change in your results. Good, but now I want to do the simulation with the K omega model. Before I forget, I want to change the model here to k omega, omega 
Omega, save. And in zero, we do not have initial values for Omega, so I have to create a file for Omega. I will copy Epsilon and call it Omega. But now in Omega, we have the entries of Epsilon. Now I have to change those entries. To change the dimensions, actually omega is a frequency, so I have to use here 0, 0, minus 1. And I have to calculate the initial values of omega. And for that, I will go to this slide and I will use this equation, which is a very, very rough estimation for omega, as you will see. But let's just calculate it. I go here to my LibreOffice, calculate epsilon divided by k. Epsilon divided by k and so I will use 17.57 for my estimation. 17.57 I will initialize omega in the entire domain with this value and I will fix it on the inlet. Again 17.57 17 and I want to change here the wall functions to omega wall function. Save. And now I have to change some values here. In FV schemes in the Pitsdale tutorial, there were, was no divergence scheme for omega. So I will just copy here epsilon and insert omega instead. So I will use linear upwind for the convection term or in the transport equation of omega. And in FV solution, I will use the same matrix solver for omega as for k and epsilon, and I will use the same relaxation factor omega and 0 0.7 save now i start with the simulation enter the simulation is running again i will take a look at the output here in the terminal analyze it and then i'll open up the results in paraview and then compare the information in regard to convergence but let's just wait. The simulation is convergent. As you see here, the number of iteration is decreasing, which is always good. Now, let's wait. And the simulation will stop now. Yes, very good. So now let's take a look at the output. Solving for u x, u y, initial residual of 8 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So here in this case we are above 10 to the power of minus 6 and our initial residual is even 10 to the power of minus 5 for u y. For p we have an initial residual of 10 to the power of minus 3. For omega, we have a value of minus 5 and also for k. So if I want to reach 10 to the power of minus 6, I would do additional iterations. Maybe 1000 until 3000, but I won't do that. I will open up the results here in Paraview and I will take a look at the results. So let's go to k omega. And I open up the form.form file, not the VTK file. Now you know how to check omega. Omega has the same issue as epsilon. Good, so I want to show you u, u, very good. Now let's take a look at the results. As you see, there is a change, uh, there is a difference between the two models. And in the beginning, the velocity field does change. But after 900, 1000 iterations, the velocity field is 
constant. So the velocity field is converging. Now P, because P was in both cases the field with the highest initial residual and here we even had an initial residual of 10 to the power of minus 3 and above. So let's take a look at this. Is this convergent? And now if I browse through the results, as you see that there is a difference between the models, but after a while the fields do not change anymore. And as you see here, you have some issues on the inlet. And this is what I meant. It is always a very, very good idea to put your inlets and outlets as far away from your region of interest as possible. Because here I would have to go back and think about my inlet boundary conditions. Because there are some issues with P, <laughs> not just P. So if I, but P is convergent. K is very similar. The fields are changing in both cases and after 1000 iterations the fields remain constant. There is a, a difference, for example, here and here and here. But again, also in this case, go back to your block mesh dictionary, ch check your y plus values and change your block mesh dictionary so you have in both cases y plus values between 5 and 30, at least the average values. Now as for new t and here you see that there is a difference between the, the two cases because here we set up k and epsilon in a way so we have a turbulent viscosity of 10 to the power of minus 3 on the inlet and here we chose k and omega so we have an inlet value of nu t of 10 to the power of minus 2. So in this case as I mentioned this was a very very rough estimation so I would have to go back and change my omega value in zero and this is again your homework besides changing your block mesh dictionary go back think about your omega value and set it in a way so you have a new t value on your inlet of 10 to the power of minus 3. So these two simulations are comparable. Good, and again, here I cannot show you omega. For that, I would have to circumvent this problem with the error message. I can maybe show you here. It says it's for omega found duplicated entries. Same issue. But with the VTK format, you can circumvent this issue. Okay, now I want to do the simulation with the LRR model. Now, in the K-Epsilon model, we had transport equations for K and, om and Epsilon. In the K-Omega model, we had a transport equation for Omega and for K. And now in the LRR model, we have a transport equation for Epsilon and for a symmetric tensor called R. Now we have to set up this symmetric tensor in zero. We do not have that. We could do that by hand, but there is this very handy tool called capital R. But in order to execute this, we need a dictionary in constant called turbulence properties. And for that, I will copy this from a piezoform tutorial, maybe the, maybe the cavity tutorial. And I will copy it into constant. Now we have it here. And if I open this up, this just says that we are using error as models. Good, now I can type in capital R, enter. And this calculates the field of R out of our turbulent fields. Now we have it in zero. And if I open it up, here you see we have a symmetric tensor with six entries which makes sense because a symmetric tensor has three diagonal elements and six off-diagonal elements, but they are symmetric. 
So you have three independent orthogonal elements. Good. Now, before I forget, I have to change here the model. And for some reason, here you have to use, you cannot use LRR if you want to execute R. So now is the time to change it to LRR. And in system FV schemes in the Pits Daily tutorial, there were settings for the discretization of the R schemes and also in FV solution, we had entries for R. So I will use those and start with the simulation. Press enter. Now the simulation is running. Let's wait and then take a look at the results. Now in this case, we have more transport equations because we are transporting the components of the symmetric tensor, at least in 2D. But the number of iteration is decreasing, which is good. But let's just wait until 2000. Now the simulation is running and the simulation will stop. Now, very good. So let's take a look. Solving for ux, initial residual minus seven, uy minus seven. So for the velocity, we are below 10 to the power of minus six. For p, minus five. So let's take a look. If this, if the p field is convergent, for epsilon minus seven and for the components of our r tensor in 2D at least, we, we are below 10 to the power of minus six. Very good. This looks good. Now I want to open up the results of L R R. Okay. Now let's translate it. And let's start with the velocity field again. Okay, and now as you see, there is a difference between the models, but after, let's just say, after 1700 iterations, the LRR case is also convergent. The velocity field does not change. On broad scales, the results are very similar, but there is always a little bit of a difference. Now, let's take a look at P. P was always the field with the highest initial residual after 2000 iterations. Let's take a look. The P field is different and it does change. But after 1,500 iterations, even the p-field is convergent. But there is a difference, as you see. Now, maybe I want to show you new t. And, as you see, there is a difference between the new t-values. Maybe I zoom in to this value, and here you see that... No, Maybe let's zoom into this value and then let's browse through the results here. And as you see here, the new T value does not change after 1700 iterations. But here again, we set the values of epsilon and R in a way that we have now here a new t value of 10 to the power of minus one even. So here again, homework for you, go back and change your initial values. So you have an initial residual of 10 to the power of minus three. And again, 
check Y plus and also change your block mesh dictionary. And this should be an exercise how to change values in the initial conditions and in the on the mesh for you. And maybe another interesting phenomenon that you can evaluate here is this backflow. Here, if I show you maybe the X component of the velocity, here in the top, the flow is going from the left hand side to the right hand side, from the inlet to the outlet. So we have positive values for the X component of the velocity. And here in the bottom, we have negative values. So we have here a backflow. And it is interesting how long this backflow region is. And what you can do, you can put a line from here to here for all the three cases in sample dictionary, or you can do it here directly in Paraview with this plot over line utility. Put a line here, very close to the wall, and then export the results to LibreOffice, Excel, wherever you want, and then show the X component of your velocity in one diagram for the three cases and then compare the point where the sign changes of the X value, where it changes from minus to plus. Okay, and you will see that there is a difference between the three models. But at this point, I would like to stop recording now. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.